Hi, I'm Craig Sigal, the mental toughness trainer for youth sports, and I head up the Mental Toughness Academy. Now, many people in the sports world wonder, is sports psychology the missing ingredient in athletic success? Coaches, parents, and athletes around the world are really coming around to the idea of the importance of mental training in sports. Learning basic sports psychology tools and hiring sports psychologists to work with teams is getting more and more popular among coaches and schools. And there's some commonly taught sports psychology training and techniques that help improve athletes' mental toughness and confidence. They include things like goal setting, visualization, positive self-talk, and developing performance routines. We know from the experience of working with hundreds of athletes at the Mental Toughness Academy that these techniques are often not enough to overcome serious mental blocks and performance anxiety that that most athletes experience at one time or another in their sports careers. And why is this? Well, it all comes down to the way our mind works. You know, to really understand the mechanics of anxiety in, in sports psychology terms, you first need to understand what happens inside the typical athlete's mind. An athlete who wants to overcome some mental block that's holding them back in their sport needs to master two types of thoughts or thinking. The first is the cognitive or, or the conscious mind thinking. The second is the automatic or the unconscious mind. The conscious mind makes changes very easily. If, give, if you give the athlete's conscious mind a new way of doing things that makes sense and they believe it'll improve the chances of performing better, well, they can easily adopt that new way of thinking and change the behaviors needed to make the changes happen in the short run. On the other hand, the unconscious mind is not so easily swayed and can actually be quite stubborn. If you've ever experienced a mental block and tried to get over it, you know how true this is. The unconscious mind is it's like an elephant and the conscious mind is like the rider on the elephant. An elephant can easily resist whatever the rider wants it to do. But if the rider and the elephant are in sync and harmony, then they are unstoppable and they can achieve powerful goals together. Typical sports psychology programs and books, they do a good job of helping the conscious mind, the rider on top of the elephant. They help the athlete, you know, like the rider of the elephant, by giving directions to the mind of places they want it to go. And that works some of the time. Unless, of course, the athlete's unconscious mind, or that elephant, has got some mental block that holds them back. In our mental toughness training, we dig deeper and we teach the athlete, the writer, how to communicate with that elephant to get it to go where they want it to go. If you've ever, if you've ever seen an athlete suddenly unable to perform a move that they've done hundreds of times, like, like a gymnast suddenly not being able to flip over backwards, you know what I mean. Now this is where sports psychology books and journals they're really lacking sometimes in helping athletes reach their highest potential this way. At the Mental Toughness Academy, we help athletes discover how to tap into their unconscious performance nervous system. I've never heard a coach or commentator say about a brilliant performance, he's playing unconscious. That's what makes for amazing performances. Athletes need to learn to tap into their emotions so they can communicate with their unconscious mind. It's a portal of communication. See, the problem with many sports psychology programs for athletes is that they teach athletes to push down or put aside, ignore, or otherwise suppress their emotions, thinking they're gonna interfere with their performances. And I call this military-style mental toughness. And it works for some athletes some of the time, but definitely not consistently and over the long run. Now don't get me wrong, the military style of pushing down your emotions it definitely has its uses, especially in combat. But it does not work for most athletes, especially kids. And sports psychologists recognize that anxiety can end up turning a minor problem into a full-blown mental block that can completely paralyze an athlete. You see the emotions, they build up, and then they explode at the worst time and place, usually under pressure. The athlete melts down in the middle of, a, middle of a big game or event from that overwhelming feeling of fear and stress and pressure. 
The quickest and most effective way to overcome anxiety is to embrace and ultimately master your emotions this way. And this is the core of what I teach in our mental toughness trainings at the Academy. I believe mental toughness is when you are focused, confident, determined, and resilient, especially under pressure. Sports psychology seems most effective at improving focus, but remember, the elephant is in charge of all the rest. And we can help you be in charge as that rider. And that's just the beginning of learning of mental toughness. If you want that competitive advantage for your young athlete, go to sportsmentaltoughness.com for free video training to perform under pressure, to turbocharge confidence, to build resiliency, and learn life skills through participation in sports. Welcome to the Winner's Circle. I'm Craig Sigal. Put your email in the box.